morning right so we have been looking at uh, linear wave equation so far right so yesterday in fact we finished with the demos so <coughs> to be precise we have been looking at linear first order one dimensional wave equation of course as I noted somewhere in between this is not quite uh, it looks similar to but is not quite identical to the class of equations that we are looking at in the in fluid mechanics as such right though I can give a uh, an interpretation as of some stream travelling at a constant speed A carrying the property U with it. <coughs> Another typical equation that we run into is this equation we will spend a little while right we will try to spend like a part of today or the whole of to, uh, this class talking about it. I could of course spend the rest of the semester talking about it but I do not think I am going to do it we have spent enough time on the linear one okay so this is uh, this is linear this is said to be quasi linear okay. So if you had a dou u by dou x dou u dou x whole squared then it would become non-linear or a dou u dou t whole squared then it would become non-linear okay so this is uh, quasi linear and we look at this equation and see whether we can figure out any properties of this equation uh, from the from a analytic solution point of view just like we did earlier right and see where we can take it from there and after that uh, I will leave this alone and then we will go on right looking at uh, looking at other other equations of interest to us like Euler's equation and so on okay. So if this is you will hear this being called either the quasi linear one dimensional first order wave equation right you may even see it sometimes in literature or in books as the inviscid Burgers equation okay which, uh, which anyway so it could also be called the inviscid Burgers equation but you may see it. you may even see it being called the inviscid Burgers equation. Now just to recollect in the beginning uh, when we are talking about this equation we realize the importance of characteristics and in the xt plane right in the xt plane we saw that we had characteristics that had slope a that basically means our slope 1 over a in this coordinate system that basically means that whatever it is we were doing was propagating at the speed a in a given amount of time right in a in a unit time in unit time it was basically uh, propagating a distance a uh, distance a in unit time so that its speed the propagation speed was a that is what that is what we had. In this case the propagation speed is u is that fine in this case the propagation speed is u. So the first question is the argument that I used for this does this argument still hold here that is can I still say that some s dot gradient of u equals 0 where s equals I do not remember what uh, basis vectors I used last time but anyway it is okay ui plus j where i and j are unit vectors along x and t am I making sense. So this notion of the directional derivative still works here. So you still have du ds equals 0 where this s is measured along this direction s okay and that argument that we used that time saying that along this line because the right hand side is 0 the right hand side is 0 then the story is different because the right hand side is 0 along this line u is a constant is that okay and along this line if u is a constant along that line the propagation speed is a constant fine does that work for you. So now all we are going to do is we are going to say oh this has slope u 1 over u you tra you travel a distance u in unit time remember it is still quasi linear 
right it just so happens that along this line you use a constant that is very important so I to sort of think think that through to make sure that there is no issue. So we will use this just like we did last time we will use this to see whether we can come up with solutions to this equation just like we did for this case we will see if we can come up for solutions for this case okay. Uh, clearly we cannot do the exponentials like we did last time because the exponential function had the a in the exponent and then you will be writing u in terms of itself that does not make sense okay. Okay I mean it does not help us I mean it is sort of an implicit form that does not really help us you do not say it does not make sense but it does not really help us right. Let us consider some initial condition so you consider the initial condition this is u that is x okay we will we will we will consider a series of initial conditions and see what we get you consider an initial condition where u equals and we are going to only look at the just like we did before either a unit length or a length l or whatever it does not matter okay. If the initial condition is 1.0 this is at all of this is at t equals 0 all of this is at t equals 0. If the initial condition is 1.0 everywhere what is the solution the initial condition is 1.0 everywhere on the xt plane what do you expect actually it is a rather boring problem it is the same as the do u do x plus right do, do u do t plus do u do x equals 0 that is what it degenerates to. So the initial condition then basically says that all of these characteristics are 45 degree lines right with uh, propagation speed 1 and if my boundary condition also continues to be 1 then you will have characteristics coming out of that is that fine okay. So this is in that in that sense it is sort of degenerated just because just because just because u is a constant in this happy case it happens here so if u had been a it would be the same as that equation is that fine okay okay let us consider another one. So if you have something that starts off from 0 and goes to 1 and then is a constant and the boundary condition on the left hand side is 0 it is going to continue to be 0 the boundary condition that I am going to apply for all time at x equals at x equals 0 at x equals 0 u equals 0 is about is uh, x equals 0 u equals 0 is the boundary condition that I am going to apply okay what do we get for the corresponding characteristics you do the easy one first so this is a 45 degree line it goes to 1 so clearly this goes to 1 right so let us do let us do that first so this is this is 1 right let us do the easy part which is to the right hand side they are all 45 degree lines like this the same 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 deal so they are all 45 degree lines like this so you get okay is that fine what happens in between what is it here at the leftmost point it is it is uh, it is the slope is infinite basically the slope is in slope is right indeterminate the slope is infinite so you get a the, the characteristic here is a nice line there and what happens in between for instance what happens at 0.5 the slope is 2 it is a steeper line right so at the slope is 2 so at 0.5 you would basically get a steeper line and as you go towards this the lines get steeper as you go towards this the lines get shallower till you get to 45 degrees okay right this is called an expansion fan this is an expansion fan okay this is an expansion fan that you would have seen in gas dynamics right so this is an expansion fan so this behavior is very different from this behavior so now we are starting to see the u du dx sort of kick in right the effect of the u du dx term 
is that okay a third example of course is the more interesting example the third example is going to start at 1 it is a 45 degree line going down to 0 here so this is also 1.0 x equals 1 that is x equals L and then it is 0 afterwards right and for all t x equals 0 tells you that u equals 0 u equals I am sorry u equals 1. Is that fine? Okay. So, as a consequence, as a consequence, what are you going to get? Again, we will do the easy one first. So, between 1.0 and L, you are basically going to get vertical lines because uh, it is stagnation, right? It is no, there is u is 0. This is propagation speed, u is 0. The flow there is stagnated. So, you will get vertical lines. Well, if I can draw vertical straight lines right up to that. And of course, at the characteristic at 0, if you look at that again, you will get a 45 degree line. So, now something bizarre happens, the characteristics intersect, right. So, I will continue this through, and then what happens to the in between points? They are all the slope is going to increase. And in this particular case, it will turn out that they will all pass through this point. Okay, so I won't draw any more because it will become a mess. Is that okay? So how do we interpret these two? Right, this is very clear. This is this is just pure simple translation. The first one is very clear. How do we interpret the other two? How do we interpret the other two? So, as as uh, the second one, for instance, as T evolves, what do you expect will happen? How does that? How does this? How does this graph? How does this graph? How does this graph evolve from looking at this? How does it evolve? See, you know at least you know the propagation speed of this, right? You, you can actually work out the propagation speed of each of these individual quantities okay. So effectively what you are going to get as time progresses you will get a series of functions. So if this is 1 this is this is what you started off with uh, let me draw it with a white line like this or shall I draw it there maybe I can draw it back there I will draw it back here. So as time progresses at different times this point is going to this point is going to move to the right right. So this point is going to move to the right and you will get a function that looks like this am I making sense okay that is why it is an expansion fan. So if, uh, if you if you waited for uh, a second time unit that is twice the first time unit is going it is translating at a constant speed of 1 okay and then you will end up with maybe I choose a different color you end up with a function like that okay is that fine and you can see that yes indeed we do have a we do have a so at, at different time intervals at different time time intervals so if I got this right just say this is at this is at one time unit if you want if you use seconds one second use meters per second and second. So this is at t equals 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.
right or one third, two thirds whatever and by the time you get to one time unit you are here, right equal intervals, they are equal intervals it will propagate equal, equal distances here. On this end it does not propagate at all, in between it propagates at a proportional speed, okay is that fine and indeed this line, this line is, is, is getting stretched, this line is getting stretched is that okay. So this is at this is at different time time intervals okay maybe I will add one more just for the fun of it I think uh, somewhere there. So this is at uh, t equals 0, this is at 0.25, 1 quarter, 1 half, 3 fourths, 1 time unit. So in Right. By the time you propagate one time unit, it's travelled a distance of one. It's fine. Everybody. What happens in this case? What happens in this case? If I were to just follow through. So after a small time interval. Right, the leftmost point is propagating at one unit per second, right? And I would get a solution that's like this. If I waited a little more time, then I would get a solution like this. It's going to go through zero because these are all stagnation points; they're not moving. They basically those points points to the right are not moving and if you waited a little more time you would get that and what is the final one by the time you came to one unit you have now come to a point where you have a you have travelled the full distance right and in fact at this point at this point all of these characteristics meet can we go beyond that does it make sense does it make sense can we go beyond that well that see that re that really depends on no it depends on what is the actual application whether we are able to go beyond that really depends on what application for example if you if you were to look at these as trains travelling on a railroad track if you were to look at these as trains travelling on a railroad track there is possibly a, a railway station here ignore all of the stuff there is a, a slow passenger train right a reasonably fast train and an express train and if they make it at the same time to the railway station at the railway station you have something called sidings right so they can you can pull a train over to, and they can actually cross each other at the station it is actually possible that they cross it depends on the application am I making sense all this basically says is that this train is fast travelling faster than the other trains and if there is a way for you to shunt the trains from one track to another track so that they can actually overtake each other see that is the key that they can actually overtake each other it is actually possible that they do propagate this way am I making sense is that fine right so it depends on what is the interpretation that we give to this what is what what governs these equation what is the interpretation that we give to these characteristics right. The other possibility of course is and these kinds of things happen the solution can become multi multi valued so the solution can become multi valued here you look at these characteristics and say wait a minute use constant along this use constant along this use con each each train has its own speed each u is constant along and yes at the railway station the trains can be multiple multi valued you are there your train is stationary and you have seen other trains on other tracks going by right at uh, at a reasonable clip fine so the, the u can be multi valued at a given point right we are so used to thinking of this possibility that they are multi valued being right I mean it is you do not encounter it very often at least we do not encounter it very often. The other possibility of course is 
that you do have a function even in a regular physical setting which is multi value. So, if you think of I think the standard classic example that given is a wave breaking. So, you can have if you go to the beach I have removed all the froth and all of that stuff, but you could actually have you could actually have a wave, wave a wave breaking right and you could the, the wave it can become multi value if your if your u indicates the depth right is a measure of the depth okay measure of the depth or a function of the square root of the depth because it is tied to the propagation speed right then it is possible that it actually becomes it actually becomes multi value it depends on the context that you are talking about right if you are on the other hand uh, there is a traffic light here and all of these cars are stopped then all of you if you do not stop in time yes this is going to happen right. So, you can have a pile up okay. So, there can be situations where something like this something like this actually happens fine right and in gas dynamics what we are used to which is why you have the response that no no it is not possible. So, if you have a pipe right which is the, which is why I gave you the uh, if you have a single lane traffic and you cannot get around you cannot get around then there is a problem then you are going to end up with the situation that I have shown here where you start off with something that looks like you can end up with a function that ends up like this you start off with, with a function that looks like that and you end up with a function that looks like this okay. So, what is the big deal why am I harping about this right I have sort of spent I could have just said oh do you do t a do you do x equals 0 just try it out for different things but why why am I harping on it why am I making a big deal about it. If you think about yesterday's demo right when we were doing when we had dissipation or when we used heat equation if you have if you have a step the step tends to smoothen out okay and when we had oscillations the oscill everything was smooth right all everything that we everything that we had was actually relatively smooth. This is a strange situation this is a strange situation right and it is also possible you will hear people say oh nature does not like discontinuities and so on right I mean you can you, you can make this broad statement nature does not like discontinuities. But here you have a situation right here you have a situation where this governing equation actually generates a discontinuity where none existed okay right and for us it is important for us it is important because we saw that the dissipation term on the right hand side of the linear wave equation was smoothing that resembles viscous term in the Navier Stokes equation okay that very closely resembles the viscous term in the and it turned it is smoothing right. But the left hand side that is the dou u dou t plus u dou u dou x term this kind of a term it is also there in the Navier Stokes equation on the left hand side on the left hand side of the Navier Stokes has a tendency to make it steeper okay is that fine you understand what I mean by making it steeper what is happening what is happening to the high wave numbers here when it when it when you go from here to here what is happening to the high wave numbers they are decaying their amplitudes are decaying that means that if you are going from something like this to this. So, you imagine you draw the characteristics for this you expect that this is going to become a shock like this why because if this is a propagation speed this is traveling faster than that right. So, if you just if you just have if you just have a smooth a smooth initial condition the demo we went from here to here but instead of going from if you had started off with this and you were solving this equation what we see now is this is going to become that it is a competing it is a competing opposing effect. Am I making sense which is interesting right and where does it come from what is the source that means I am adding somehow from this low frequency I am generating high frequency terms where does that come from okay the term is here the term is here just imagine that just imagine that u is like sin theta sin n delta x right u is like sin theta what happens to this this becomes sin theta cos theta which is sin 2 theta. And that is where the frequency doubling occurs you are taking you are adding to the sin 2 theta you add to the sin you understand you are going to add to the sin 2 theta term if you were to do or do a decomposition of some kind you are going to add to the sin 2 theta term you are generating a sin 2 theta term 
where you only started off with the sin theta term okay. So you are this is this is even a function a smooth function like this is going to get steeper. So in the actual equations where you have both a viscous term and this quasi linear term both these effects are competing and therefore what you have studied in gas dynamics that is the thickness of any shock that forms. So in gas dynamics of course these are called shocks right occasionally in mathematical literature you may hear them refer to it as an internal boundary layer sort of an oxymoron but if you know boundary layer theory you will know what, what they are talking about right okay right. So you, you have you have there, there, there are shocks right these are called shocks and you know that the thickness of the shock depends on the viscosity am I making sense viscosity is trying to do this viscosity is trying to do this the shock is the, the uh, quasi linear term is trying to push it back here and they come to some kind of an equilibrium right left to its own devices the quasi linear term will actually give you a discontinuity. So viscosity is sort of uh, has the opposite effect which is why that balance is what gives you the thickness of that shock right and it changes it depends on what the viscosity of the fluid is is that fine okay are there any questions right. So this is this is as far as uh, what should I say as far as this uh, quasi linear equation is concerned we will see whether let me what happens can we say anything beyond the shock. So obviously there are different possibilities on the one hand on the one hand you can have you can have this effect on the one hand you can have this effect on the other hand I will redraw this with a shock I will redraw this with a shock there on the other hand before I so you would get you expect to get this I should not have drawn these vertical lines first but it is okay I will I change it right and then you have these lines and of course you have conditions coming from the left which I have not drawn there right or you have all of those you have all of these lines they are all at 45 degrees they are all parallel to this right and they form a shock. So I need a different colour for the shock these characteristics merge and they form a shock and basically the shock sort of consumes the characteristics it eats the characteristics characteristics disappear into the shock right okay is there a way for us to find the propagation speed of the shock right I mean see now is the shock just located there is it going to travel is it going to be stationary the way I have drawn it it is going to propagate the shock, the shock is going to travel that is the way I have drawn it is there a way for us to find the propagation speed of the shock okay should be is there a way for us to find the propagation speed of the shock. So we will zoom in on this we will zoom in on this area we will choose a, a little more so now I am not going to I will just say T I will not show you the origin I will say X we do not know where this is right somewhere here there is a shock our objective is to find the so of course the, sh the shock I do not care where it originates I do not care where it is going somewhere here there is a shock and I will choose a convenient control volume. choose convenient control volume with points A and B okay it is going to be a rectangle I will tell you what I am proposing to do okay I choose this rectangle I will rewrite my equation in a fashion that I am able to relate the conditions on the left hand side of the shock to the right hand side of the shock and I propose to take the limit as A and B approach each other 
right and from that I am hoping that I will be able to infer something about how fast the shock is propagating is that fine. For instance if this is uh, if this point is x a and this point is x b right so this is x a t a in the x t plane x b t b then we already know that the propagation speed of the shock u shock here u shock is x b minus x a divided by t b minus t a fine I seem to have implicitly assumed that the shock is propagating at a constant speed okay. Okay, let us see where this takes us. Uh, 